Guys, it's that time of the year again, and I am so very excited about this. Hello, beautiful bookworms! My name is Katrina, and welcome to my channel. And today, representing my Ravenclaw fellas with my blue um, blouse thingy, because it's cold and I couldn't wear a t-shirt, the magical readathon is happening again, guys. So I am very excited, and I hope that you guys are too. If you don't know what the Magical Readathon is, it is a readathon created and hosted by G at Book Crows, which I will leave linked somewhere, and all of the links that you need for that thingy, I will leave link. And this is the third year the Magical Readathon is happening. I have been participating since the year one, and in addition to year two and this year as well, is that we have careers that G made up and that we can just fulfill prompts for those careers. So basically, it's the owls and the newts in Harry Potter. So you have in April the owls and in August the newts and some fun other stuff happening towards like the, the end of the year. It's just, it's really, really fun, but I don't know how to explain that. So we'll have to go to G's channel. And if you've never heard of this, I really encourage you go participate because the Magical Readathon is like the best readathon out there and I said what I said. So, I don't want this video to get really, really long. This year, I decided I was going for another career because last year I did the Alchemist career and I did pretty fine. It was the most difficult career in the career guidebooks, but because I had a little bit of time, extra time, I wasn't in classes, I was just doing a project for my PhD, I decided I'm going to do it and I did it. I am a full-fledged alchemist, but now I want to try something new. And she added a new career that I absolutely love and it's my face completely, which is spellmaker career, which is the nerd career because you are doing spells and the traits are supposed to be logic, enthusiastic, passionate, and inventive. And I like to think that that is me. So I am going to try and be a spellmaker this year. However, in order to be a spellmaker, you only have to do ancient runes, arithmancy, astronomy, charms, divination, and history of magic. I'm looking there because I have like everything in a sheet, so that's the thing. But I also wanted to be very extra as per Ravenclaw usual, and I decided that I was going to try and be an animagus as well. So for that, I also need to do Transfigurations, potions, and arithmancy. Again, okay, so that one already counts. So what I decided to do is think like Hermione Granger and think as a normal Ravenclaw that is not Hermione Granger. If you can do the entirety of the owls and then just pick the newts for our career, wouldn't you do it? Because I would. If I could do all of the owls just to get the grades and then decide what I wanted to do, I would do it. So I decided that I'm going to read 12 freaking books this month again and do the entirety of the Owls, of course, giving the priorities to those that are actually fitted for a spellmaker and an animagus. So without further ado, everyone, this is my TBR for the third year of the Magical Readathon. And here we go. Okay, so the first prompt is Ancient Runes, and you have to read a book with a heart on the cover title for the Arth... the heart... Jesus... rune. So, I picked Heart Shaped Box by Joe Hill. This one not only has a heart in the title, it has a heart on the cover of this edition, and it's by Joe Hill. I have read Lock and Key by Joe Hill, and... Gabriel Hernandez? I don't know, I don't remember it the other dude's name, but I have loved that and I really want to see how his writing translates into novels since I only read comics by him. So yeah, Hardship Box is a very, very famous book. In this situation, I do believe that this this dude that collects um, strange macabre things and then he sees like this um, tagline that says, I sell my stepdad's ghost to the highest bidder and he buys the ghost and he's the proud owner of a suit that's supposedly haunted and i don't know how the heart-shaped box has to do with it but apparently the heart-shaped box appears at his doorstep and i am ready to be creeped out and i hope that this is a really cool horror thriller-ish sort of book because joe hill is stephen king's son so i'm expecting the best then we have arithmancy and it is magical qualities of the number two balance or opposites 
read something that's outside your favorite genre. So if you guys know me, my favorite genres are normally classics, uh, fantasy most of it, horror as well, but classics too, in the order of fantasy, horror, which is sort of tied, and then classics. So I decided to read something that is not really my genre, which is sci-fi and sort of contemporary at the same time. And that is Eminon. And this is Eminon the Wanderer Part 1. And it's by Shinji Kajio and Kenji Tsuruta. And this is basically a sci-fi story because this woman contains all of the memories of everything that happened in the Earth since we came out of the water as beasts and then evolved as humans. Because I don't know how or why, but every single time she sort of passes this information on and on and on until the day the earth dies because she is the whole vessel of receptacle of memories of the human race and if that's not sci-fi i mean if you've read the first of this collection you would have seen that this is sci-fi so yeah because it's a manga and i really love reading mangas in these sort of readathons and because you know the earth is gorgeous for this i mean you can see it and I don't know, the story just intrigues me and I want to see what they do with this concept, so I decided to just pick it up. Then we have astronomy, night classes. Majority of the book is to be read when it's dark. And for that one I went with a manga as well, because in that case I can finish it in the dark while it's dark in the night. I just need one hour or two tops in the night to actually read a manga. So I decided to go with Eminon Wanderer Part 2 by the same authors that I've previously mentioned, since it's the continuation to the Eminon series and it's the only one that I have left to read in the situation. So yeah, I already described the plot. It's gorgeous, it's beautiful, I love it, I want to read it. Next is Care of Magical Creatures and it is Epigraphs, Creature with a Beak on the Cover. And for that one, I chose The Girl from the Other Side, Volume 7, by Nagabe. And if you can see, this creature does have a beak on this cover and in the rest of the book. So this is basically the story of this medieval sort of uh, place where there's an inside inside of a village and an outside a forest where cursed humans transform into these sorts of creatures. And then there's this little girl that you don't know what's her part in all of this, but she appears to be untouched by this curse in some way, and she lives with one of these creatures. Why? What is going on? Who are these creatures? Why are they like this? We don't know. We will know. It's beautiful, it's nostalgic, and it's just amazing in terms of art, so I really want to read it. And it's fairly small, so it's nice for a readathon. Then we have Charms with it, which is Lumos Maxima, a white cover. And now before you kill me, I don't have a lot of white covers. I have a lot of white bindings of covers, but not a lot of white covers. So I picked the most whitish sort of cover that I have, and I'm going to explain that to you. I picked Full Metal Alchemist, the Full Metal version, volume 4, and you're going to tell me, well, that's not totally white. It is not, but the backs of each of the Full Metal covers are always white, and then they have the characters on top, so you cannot completely blame the characters for not being totally, completely whitish. So, I'm picking this one, because it's majorly white in this sort of situation, and yeah, because I want to read it, and because I don't really have a complete white cover, so... We shall deal in the best way we can. If you don't know, Full Metal Alchemist is the story of these two brothers. They lose their mother and while trying to resurrect them using alchemy, main reason why I wanted to be an alchemist in the first career choosing of the Magical Readathon, they lose an arm and a leg and one of the brothers loses his entire body and has to have his soul attached to a piece of armor. And now they are older, they are practitioners of alchemy and they really want to get their bodies back and to just solve all of the situation that they created while they were doing that, while they were children, and they join the military and try to find the Philosopher's Stone. And it's really interesting, it's amazing, I love it, and these editions are to die for, and so I just want to continue reading this since I have a lot of these and I have to continue reading this at some point. Then it's Defense Against the Dark Arts, and that is Grindelows, a book set at the sea or coast. And for that, I'm gonna go with Children of the Whales, Volume 12 by Abby Yumeda. So I forgot to say, Full Metal Alchemist is by Hiromu Arakawa. Yeah. And now we are into this one again. 
So Children of the Whales is sort of a very giblish like uh, sort of uh, thingy in which we follow this society that lives in the sand boat that is sort of an island that goes in the ocean and they are being attacked for some reason. There are people with powers that die really young and people that don't have powers that don't really die until they're very very old and they are trying to find out how to stop these things from happening, how to stop being attacked by other people and how to stop dying from their powers and because the place where they live is a sand boat constantly on sea. It's in the sea. The story is in the sea. Can you see that? And when it's not in the sea, it's in coast sort of cities. So it fits. It's perfect and it fits. Ooh, this one is going to be very, very funny. So this one is divination. Third eye. Assign numbers to your TBR and use number generator to pick your read. So I have picked eight mangas that I really want to read and are on my primary TBR sort of thingy and I decided just let the random generator fulfill that thingy so I'm going to show you the process. So whilst my computer is just opening the random generator thingy I am going to show you the books that I have to choose. Number one would be Full Metal Alchemist, the Full Metal version. Number five, since I'm reading one why not read two? Number two will be The Promised Neverland, volume 11. This is by Kai Shirai and Pusuke de Misu. And if you've been on my channel for a while, you know I've been reading the series, but I am a bit far behind. So I wanted to keep reading them. So I decided to put them here. The third is Hideout by Masasumi Kakizaki. This is a horror manga series in Spanish because they don't have this printed in English. And I think that is about this writer that decides he wants to kill his wife for some reason. So I'm very interested in knowing what this is and reading it. Then we have The Witch's House, The Diary of Ellen, volume one, which is by Fumi and Yuna Kajizaki. And this is horror as well. It has witches, it has beautiful art, and it's a typical very small manga, which is one of the reasons why I really want to read it. Then as five we have Children of the Whales volume 13 by Abby Umeda, because I also have this series sort of late, so I have to catch up. That's the only reason. Then in number six we have the first volume of Mangas of the Library by Mitsu Izumi, a manga that I always, always wanted to read since I heard that this came out. I have volumes one and two and I really, like, I really want to read this, so maybe... I don't know. The seventh pick is The Wise Wise Beasts of the Wizarding Wisdoms by Nagabi, which is the creator of The Girl from the Other Side. This is manga standalone with creatures that are learning how to make spells and it's supposed to be very, very funny and beautiful in a high school and I just, I really want to read this. And then the last one, number eight, is The Ancient Mago's Bride, volume 12, by Kore Yamazaki. I have volume 11 still to read, but I will read them in another prompt that I will tell you. So this one is just a continuation in case, you know, it comes out just for me to read it. Okay, so here's the random generator. I put one through eight and I'm going to generate now. Okay. Well, the first one was eight, so I am going to be reading The Ancient Magus Bride, volume 12. Apparently, they want me to finish this fucking series, so I will, because I really like it. I will leave the description of this for when I show you volume 11 in this TBR, so let's continue. So after Divination, we have Herbology, which is Mimbalus Mimblatonia, title that starts with an M. And for that one, we have Made in Abyss, volume 7, by Akihito Tsukushi, and this one is the one that I have been putting off for a long, long time, since this is basically a tortured child sort of situation. It's not, but it's sort of. So this is basically about our main character. She is a child and she lives in the society that lives next to an abyss. And if you go inside of that abyss, it has layers and layers. And if you go to the last layer, you will never be able to come out because every time you go to a layer deep and then time to come up, physical and psychological symptoms will start to appear that will eventually lead to you dying. And our main character's mother is an explorer of the abyss and she went and she did a dip dive which is going to the end of the abyss to see what was there. And she never came back. But one day our main character receives this letter from her mother that says, I'm waiting for you at the end of the abyss. And knowingly that she can never come up again because she will die 
she decides to just go and find her mother. And I cry every single time that I read one of these. So you know why I've been putting this off, but now it's the moment. Number nine is History of Magic, Witch Hunts, book with witches or wizards. ta ta da da The Ancient Mago's Bride, volume 11 by Kore Yamazaki. So this is basically a story where you have magus and alchemists and they have different types of magic. Magus are the ones that are connected to nature and that are the real witches and wizards that can do magic pulling from nature and themselves. And the alchemists are the ones that study it and try to pull from others rather than themselves and for materials. And this is basically about Chize Hattori and she is bought by this creature called Elias and he says, I'm a Magus, I'm going to teach you how to be a Magus because you have a lot of raw power inside of you, you will be one of the last Maguses ever and you will also be my bride, hence the ancient Magus bride. It's really funny, it's also very sad and depressive sometimes because Chize has a lot of self-esteem issues, a lot of depression sometimes and but it's beautiful, it has little dragons and it has a lot of fairy creatures, which normally I don't like, but in here I really enjoyed. And it has sort of a Celtic mix to it because it's supposed to be set in England or something. It's just, it's really beautiful and the duality of magics in here is really amazing. So I'm glad I get to read two of these mangas for the foreseeable future. So next we have Muggle Studies, Perspective of a Muggle, a Contemporary. And for that one I'm going to be reading, I don't know how this translates because it's a Portuguese title. But I'll give it a shot. I do believe that it is the city and the mountains or something like that. Uh, since this is by Esad Queiroz and he's a Portuguese writer and this is sort of more like a classic than a specific contemporary and I don't really know what this is about but I have read another book by him which are the Mayas and although it's not really contemporary it talks a lot about the Portuguese society as it was some time ago and it does translate to some of the things that we are still doing and sometimes it's a social criticism sometimes it's just nostalgia i don't know i just think that this could be very nice for me to actually be reading a portuguese book in a sort of a international readathon just bringing the portuguese and I don't know i really wanted to read it and i think it could be contemporary since i live in portugal and it does have a lot to do with the history of Portugal, so I'm choosing this one and it's definitely by a muggle perspective because this has no hint of magic whatsoever, <laughs> so it's a very contemporary novel. Then we have potions, shrinking, shrinking, shrinking? What the hell? Shrinking Solution and it is a book under 150 pages and for that one I chose Gabu Memories of Memories and it is by Carlos Fuentes and this is sort of um, a leaflet that is about this dude that met Gabriel Garcia Marquez and talked with him supposedly a lot and this is sort of how he sees Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Now since I've read some of Gabriel Garcia Marquez's books which I loved because it's a sort of a um, he's the king of magical realism and it's beautiful it's amazing and it's very Latino, you know, I just, I really, I love the passion and the description of society in his stories is beautiful. And this is basically this dude talking about the Gabriel Garcia Marquez that he knows, the Gabo, as people called him uh, affectuously. And so, yeah, if this is, I don't know if this even has 100 pages. So it fulfills the challenge and I get to know more about a great writer, so that's nice. And finally we have Transfiguration, which normally is the one read that fucks up my entire TBR because it's always huge and in this year it's no different. And it is Animagus Lecture, a book or series that includes shape-shifting. And for that I'm going to read Written in Red by Ann Bishop, which I know the cover is white, but it has a lot of red as well, so don't come at me and say you had another white covers. I know, okay, I, just, I know. So written in red, for what I understand, is the story of this girl. She is a blood prophet, so every time that she cuts herself and she bleeds, she has a vision. So of course, trigger warnings for self-harming, obviously. Uh, and she has this person that controls her, she's sort of a slave, and she decides to escape. And in this place where she lives, there's the others, and the others are 
precisely shapeshifters. So they can shapeshift to wolves, to bears, to any kind of animal, I believe. I am not really sure. Um, and she tries to hide in the area where they prey and where they live. But there is a problem between the others and the humans, because she's human, of course, although she has some powers. The others are not well seen by humans, and humans hunt them, and they treat them badly, so they're sort of away from society. And the problem with trying to keep her with them is that things could happen. And I do believe that there will be a romance between the main characters. I don't know. But I'm excited to see this, and I definitely know that this has shapeshifters, so... And Anne Bishop has a nice writing style, even though sometimes I have to wonder some of the things that she writes. I don't know, but the others are amazing. So I don't know. I will see if I like this series. It has five books and I haven't even started. So I have to read this. Okay, so that's going to be all for my TBR for the Magical Readathon. I hope that I can do the entirety of the Owls. Of course, I'm going to prioritize the ones that I have to do for Spellmaker and for Animagus training. And... I cannot wait for April. I am just so excited. So I hope that you guys are going to participate as well, because if you're not, what are you doing? Just give it a shot. Even if you only read two or three books or even less, just participate because it's really fun to talk with all these people on Twitter and to just see the TBRs of people and what they want to be and just go do it and tell me in which team you are. If you are Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, Gryffindor or Slytherin and yeah, if you're going to participate or not. And if you're going to choose the same job than me or if you're going to choose another less nerdy career. So yeah, that's going to be it for today and happy readings to you all. Bye-bye!